I'm Chris. Welcome to MechChat Networks. Today I'll be covering the setup and installation of the PFSense firewall on a physical server. I'll cover everything from the setup, the installation guide, as well as common pitfalls that people experience while setting this up. Now if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive in. So we're going to talk about what you will need. This will be broken down into two sections, one being hardware and the other being software. For the hardware side of things, you're going to need a physical server or a computer. There are VM options available and I will cover this in a future video, but this video is specifically targeted for the physical side of things. <clears throat> so I do recommend having either a tower or a server readily available for this. Um, then you're going to also need an, a USB thumb drive with at least 8 gigabytes of memory, a monitor, a keyboard and a mouse, a managed switch, an AP or access point, as well as your regular use computer. Um, that, with that computer, you will be accessing the interface for PFSense Firewall once we get it installed on the server. Now on the software side of things, you only need two items. One is going to be the PFSense ISO, and the other is going to be a Flash program. You can use either Rufus or Balin Etcher. Uh, in my experience, I find it better to use Balin Etcher for the Linux side of things. And then on Windows side, it's better to use Rufus. All right, before we jump into the PFSense installation, I want to go quickly over the three types of network setups um, that are relevant for this demonstration, starting with the first one that most people are running with by default. And this is your typical home network. See at the top, you have your modem and your router and everything co connects directly to it. That includes like your laptop, your desktop, TV, maybe a fire stick or your cell phone. Uh, these all are connected over Wi-Fi and they are uh, feeding in through the router out to the internet. It's simple and it works, but it's also wide open. There's no segmentation, no perimeter defense, and every device is just sitting there exposed to each other, whatever gets past your ISP router. <clears throat> For most people, this is fine until it's really not. Especially once you start adding smart devices, home labs, or sensitive data into the mix, that's when this uh, becomes troublesome and problematic. Uh, so that's why we are going with a firewall, right? Well, now here's where things start to go sideways. I see this a lot and I've done it myself. I'm guilty when I was a new uh, infrastructure engineer. Uh, Someone gets smart and they buy a firewall, but they end up placing it after the router or next to the router where everything is still connected to the router itself. This is kind of a no-no. We want to avoid this because what really happens here is the firewall becomes ineffective. Traffic goes around it. It's not inspecting anything. It's just sitting there blinking its lights, not doing anything it's supposed to do. Think of it like a building security gate. You can uh, put it off to the side <laughs> but while everyone still walks in through the open garage, it's just uh, meaningless, right? Uh, so <clears throat> we want to avoid this setup and we're going to move over to the target architecture that we are looking to develop. This is going to include the additional pieces, the hardware of your uh, switch, as well as your access point. Uh, this is a, a proper network architecture. Um, there's other methods you could achieve this, but for purposes of this video, I'm kind of replicating what I have here at my home. Here you see that all devices feed into the switch, which then feed into the firewall and the router and the modem. Uh, it's important to take note here that though this is an access point to get to the internet and it is being used by the firewall, it is not what the access point is for every other device. As you can see here, all devices will connect to this access point, also known as a mesh network, which then feed into the switch, the firewall, the router, and out to the internet. This gives you visibility, security. It's a small change in design, really, but it has a massive improvement in security and scalability. So uh, with that being said, now that we've seen why, the, our network is set up this way. Let's get into the how. I'm going to walk you through installing PFSense next, and we'll get into the basic configuration, and then uh, you'll be able to start taking control of your network. 
All right, let's get the install files ready. We're going to start by heading over to pfsense.org forward slash download. There's a link in the description. And you're going to want to choose the AMD 64 architecture and select the USB installer. And uh, just a quick heads up, you're going to need to create a NetGate account before you can actually download the ISO. It's free. You just got to give them an email and password, nothing crazy. Go ahead and take a moment, pause this video and create your account. A few moments later. Once you're signed in, we'll go ahead and download the ISO. <clears throat> like I mentioned before, we're going to choose the AMD 64 architecture and we're going to select the USB installer and pick a nearby mirror. After that, we're ready to flash that ISO onto a USB drive and then we can install the PFSense on a physical box. I use Bellina Etcher for this uh, flash. It's fast, it's clean, and it works on all platforms. You can grab it at bellina.io forward slash etcher. Also a link in the description. Uh, once that's downloaded and installed, go ahead and launch Etcher. Select the PFSense ISO and then choose your USB drive. After that, go ahead and hit flash. Once it's finished, you've got a bootable installer ready to go. All right, let's walk through the heart of this network setup. It all starts right here within the modem. This is the device that brings in the internet service from my ISP provider into my house. And then we have our ethernet cable running straight from the modem into the WAN port of the router. The router is responsible for assigning the local IP addresses and managing the network traffic. And uh, however, instead of connecting devices directly to the router, we want the connections of these devices to flow into the firewall. So in this case, um, as you guys are aware, I am running PFSense and we want to run the router into the PFSense server and then that PFSense will filter the incoming and outgoing traffic. The router sends the data to the firewall's WAN port, uh, which you can see here. And then the firewall processes and protects that data. After that, uh, once it's been filtered, it feeds into the switch. This switch uh, has a LAN port. So we're gonna take one cable, one ethernet cable from the server port and plug it into the LAN port. From there, it travels into uh, the managed switch. And after that, we can talk about connecting all our devices. So what we have here is an access point, and this access point uh, allows my devices to connect wirelessly. And it's responsible for broadcasting the Wi-Fi signals throughout the home. And uh, the AP is connected directly to the switch via an ethernet cable. It's uh, plugged into the LAN 2 port. That connection provides the power uh, and network access extending to the secured network wirelessly to all devices. Okay, now that we have our bootable USB drive, we're gonna plug it into the rear of the server and it's going to go ahead and uh, boot up from there. If, uh, you have a server, I do recommend plugging into one of the back USB terminal ports um, because some servers can be a little finicky. So uh, after that, we actually don't need to do anything. We'll just uh, allow PFSense to do its thing on its own. It's going to go ahead and start booting up the installation process. This can take a few minutes um, or a few seconds depending on your your hardware. but. Uh, We'll go ahead and pause and let that go ahead and work through. All right. Once we get to the copyright page, we're just going to accept it. We're going to hit install PFSense. We're going to just say OK. And now we're going to select our WAN interface. Our WAN interface is going to be the EMO. 
and that is the same port that I plugged the white ethernet cable in from my router to my uh, server. We want it to go ahead and assign the IP address by DHCP, that's totally fine. Next, we're gonna accept our LAN interface and you can see here that it's not assigned, so I'm gonna assign it and you're gonna see uh, ethernet connection at EM1. After that, we need to set our IP addresses uh, on my subnet, I already have things occupying uh, 192.168.2, so I'm going to go ahead and run with .3. Uh, when I do that, I'm also going to need to adjust the DHCP range, so we're going to put that on the same .3 subnet, and then we can go ahead and continue forward with our installation. So I will press OK from here. These interfaces look correct, and now we're going to go ahead and um, let the installation proceed forward. This only will take a couple minutes. And uh, we can, so we'll just press install and OK. We're going to say OK for the Stripe redundancy, OK for the uh, drive. And this will take a few minutes. One thing I did not mention is going to ask you about the version you want to install. We're going to go with the stable version. All right, hopefully now your installation setup has been completed. We're just going to press OK. And we need to reboot the system. So we'll go ahead and reboot the system. It will only take a minute or two to reboot. And you're going to see this welcome to BFSense prompt page again. We'll just ignore that, let it do its thing automatically. We don't have to press anything. And as the boot up completes, you'll be brought to your PFSense interface through your server. So here you see we have uh, various options that we can select. We have 0 through 16. The main ones we're going to focus on uh, today is going to be option 1 and 2. So if you look right here on the WAN interface, we can see that it's been assigned by the DHCP an address of 192.168. .2.148. In my case, it's fine, and yours may say something else. Uh, but basically, what has happened here is since I am using a VM machine to install this, and I already have my firewall up and running, my firewall is assigning this a new IP, um, which is totally fine. And in your case, your router is probably going to sign the IP address. Now, where we have an issue quite often is here at the, the LAN interface. Uh, it is often assigned an automatic of 192.168.1.1 slash 24. And this is problematic. Usually your router has been assigned this IP address. So what's gonna happen is some communication errors. So we're gonna fix that by selecting option one. We're gonna say no to VLANs right now. And then we're going to make sure our interfaces are correct with EM0 and EM1. I'm going to go ahead and save those. And we're going to proceed forward. After that's been configured, we're going to go ahead and change the IP addresses. In my case, I'm going to set 192.168.3.1 slash 24. I would probably recommend, in your case, putting a subnet of 192.168.2.1. And this should prevent any miscommunications, um, conflicts in communications between your, your server and your router. So now we've got two subnets that we can work out of as well. So we're going to go ahead and um, Ignore DHCP6 right now. We don't need an IPv6 currently. We will get into this in the future, but for now, just ignore it. 
So we're going to go ahead and enable the DHCP server. Basically what we're saying here is that we are going to allow our firewall to assign addresses to any other devices that connect. And we need to give it a range. So we'll begin our range with uh, 100 and we will end it with 150. So now we're going to go ahead and press enter and it's going to ask you about setting up the HTTP uh, web configurator pro protocol. We're just going to say no and leave it where it is as of now. And now we're going to hit enter to continue and you can see that our IP addresses have been changed. Okay, we can now migrate over to our browser. And once you have a, a browser window open, you are going to input the LAN connection that you set up in the PFSense server. In my case, that's going to be 192.168.2.1. Remember, this isn't what you saw me put in for my server's LAN connection because I was using a VM for tutorial purposes. My actual server is located at this IP address. <clears throat> And your uh, automated populated credentials are going to be admin, and then your password is going to be pfsense. Uh, because mine is already set up, I have a different password. So now you should be able to get in. Uh, you may have a wizard that's going to guide you through a few basic setups. Um, you will want to go ahead and change your password. Uh, I'm going to wrap the video up here. We'll talk about configuration in future videos. I think the next video that I will publish will be setting up a VM system, a VM cluster with uh, Proxmox. And then uh, once we get some other servers set up, we'll go ahead and start configuring our firewall to protect those servers and the rest of our home network. Well, thank you for your time, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and leave me a subscribe if you think this video is useful and I will take requests for future videos. Feel free to put any requests in the comments below. Thank you. Bye. Mic check. Your local connection to the future.